Well, good morning. In case I haven't met you yet, my name is Sharon, and I am Nick's mother. Very proud of that fact. So happy Mother's Day to each of you. Anytime you are before a group of people, it's a little daunting, and it always helps if I can get you to laugh. So forgive me if you've heard these before. Just go with me and act like you really enjoy it. What is red and smells like blue paint? Red paint. <laughs> okay. And my personal favorite, have you heard about the butcher that backed up into the meat grinder? He got a little behind in his work. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Just had to start with that today, just to ease my nerves and everything. I want to share with you today something, a step in this series that we're doing. It's called The Obedient. And the scripture I'm sharing this morning is 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 6. God's word says, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. In our lives, 2021, we live with gauges. Everything is a gauge. How empty is my gas tank? How many bars are left on my phone? What time is boarding as opposed to takeoff? And how long does a recipe take to prepare? What does the GPS say the time will be when I arrive? And my favorite, when did your grandchild first call you Gammy? I remember that day very vividly when Luke said to me, bye, Gammy. Heidi and I were both standing there, and when he said it, we just <gasps> looked at each other and looked at him. It made my day. I immediately texted Nick and said, this made my day. Luke just called me Gammy for the first time. Now, Zach was with him when I texted him, and it didn't quite make Zach's day. Zach was a little concerned, and he later wrote me a note, which he read, and said, Gammy, yes or no? Do you still love me? <laughs> Absolutely. Why is that? Because if you're a grandmother, if you're a mother, if you're a grandmother, you know this even more. The more they are, the more love there is. It's not that you love one more than the other. You love each of them in a very special way. When it comes to our Lord, the gauge goes one way. He, his love for you, his love for me, is unconditional. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 3 says, The Lord appeared to us in the past, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love, I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. Have you ever done something wrong? Anyone? Oh, come on, we've all done things wrong. I should say, have you done something wrong this morning? Each of us do things that are not exactly right. Each of us have done things that are wrong. And yet our Lord still loves you. I remember as a child, there was a, um, I grew up in Irwin, and at the Norwin Shopping Center, this was before all the other shopping centers, before um, Murphy Smart was out here, and now Giant Eagle and all that, we had the Norwin Shopping Center, 
And in the middle of the Norwin Shopping Center, way back when, they brought in this giant slide. Now, this was when giant slides first came out. And it was like an amazing thing. And you could pay a dollar, sit on a piece of wax paper, and go down as fast as possible. It was an incredible thing. And it was something to look forward to. And I'll never forget it, because every Friday night, we went grocery shopping as a family. This was way before all kinds of things that kids have today. Our enjoyment, our thrill was to go grocery shopping as a family. And when we were done, we would go to my grandparents' house. But this particular Friday night, the giant slide was at, at the Norwin Shopping Center. I was beyond excited. My sister says that I have an issue with adrenaline, that I'm an adrenaline junkie, and I might be, I don't know, but I just could not wait to get on that slide, sit on that wax paper, and and just, oh, I was thrilled. I was so excited. I could hardly control myself. In fact, I didn't control myself, and I did something that my mother said, Sharon, do not do this. And I did it. She warned me, Sharon, stop it now. And I didn't listen. The discipline that she gave to me that day was, I'm sorry, you cannot ride the giant slide tonight. I was brokenhearted. I was beyond brokenhearted. It was... For an adrenaline junkie, at the age of eight, I would not be able to go down that slide. The wax paper would mean nothing. I had to stand there while I watched my older two sisters get the chance to go down the slide. Now, neither one of them had the thrill in their lives for the fast pace. I was the only one. It was so hard for me. But it was something, it was a discipline that was given to me. Did it mean that my parents did not love me? Absolutely not. Quite the opposite. It didn't matter what I did. Mom and dad would always love me. Mom and dad would sometimes discipline me because I had done something that was wrong. And it's the same with the Lord. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that you can do, that I can do, that will destroy, that will take away the love that the Lord has for you. His love for you is everlasting. His kindness is unfailing. I don't know where you are today, but maybe you're sitting here saying, I don't know if God loves me. I don't know if he can love me. God's word tells us his love for you is everlasting. His kindness is unfailing. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 7 says, It, love, always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. God's love never, never, never fails. God's love never fails. I don't know if you realize this about me, but I have four grandbabies, and I absolutely adore them. They are the joy of my life. I, I just, I, I love to be with them. I love to tease them. I love them to tease me. I just, they are so precious. They bring such joy to my life. And one of the, one of the privileges that I have is to, along with their parents, but I get to talk to them at different times, especially the older ones, when maybe they're upset about something or they're afraid of something or something's not going right in their day. And I will not tell you that I can always bring peace and calm to their life. I can't. But I get to speak into them the words of Jesus. I get to speak into them God's word and tell them what God's word says. One thing is that I love to speak into Zach. He'll say to me, Gammy, I'm afraid tonight. 
Okay, Zach, God's word tells us that perfect love takes away all fear. And it does. When we trust in God's love, it takes away all fear. So we have to get it into our mindset, into our spirit, that God's love for you, God's love for me, is always there. No matter what, whether I obey or disobey, God's love is there. I cannot do anything. I can't do anything to make Jesus love me more. I cannot do anything to make Jesus love me less. His love is a constant. No matter what, I know his love is there. I remember a long time ago, about six months after my husband and I got married, we were, we were living in a little townhouse in La Trobe. And it was a really neat townhouse. I loved it. It was the first place we lived that had a dishwasher. Now, growing up, I had never experienced a dishwasher. It was just my sisters and myself that did the dishes. And usually it was them because I always found a reason why I couldn't help at that moment. But I was thrilled. I was so excited because I had a dishwasher. I could put the dirty dishes in. I could put the soap in. And a little while later, they would be clean. It, just, it was just a really neat thing. But something happened one day. I ran out of dishwasher detergent. No biggie. I had my handy dandy joy dishwashing liquid. Oh, you, you've done this too, obviously. And so I opened up the dishwasher with the dirty dishes in it and that little cup, I poured it full of joy dish detergent. And I understood that it's probably not as strong as what the powder was. So I added a couple extra squirts. Uh Uh-huh. I closed it up, closed the door, hit the magic button, and waited for my dishes to get clean. In the meantime, I went and did some things around the house. I, I don't even remember what it was. It was a long time ago. But I heard a weird noise coming from the kitchen. And when I went into the kitchen... You know what I saw? (laughs) It doesn't matter what kind of a seal you have on your dishwasher. It doesn't matter how tight you lock it. When you put that dish detergent in there, not the dishwasher, but the dish detergent, it makes so many suds. I mean, so many. I'm not talking about a little bit. I mean, it was coming out of the top, the bottom, all around. It The dishwasher could not handle the suds. It just overflowed. It just was everywhere. Now, you might think that I started crying. I actually started laughing. It was hilarious. It was like, this is like the three stooges. And I loved it. But you know what? That's how God's love is. It doesn't matter what you do to keep it out. God's love overflows for you. He loves you. There is no way that you can stop his love. But my response is, how I obey Jesus shows my love for him. Not his love for me, but my love for him. If I say that I love him, but I do not keep his commands... I am a liar. I am a liar. What are his commands? The commands of Jesus are to live for him in all that I do. To love everyone just like Jesus does. And to be like Jesus. To live like Jesus in all that I do in every area of my life, to love the way Jesus loves. Have you ever had anyone in your life that was unlovable? Maybe it was a neighbor. Maybe it was a relative. Maybe it was whoever. God's word tells us to to love them the way Jesus loves. 
How does Jesus love? How does he love? Remember the dish detergent? He loves overflowing. He loves with everything in him. Sometimes our ways, God asks us to show his love, to obey him in ways that are a little quirky, a little different. God puts something upon your heart that says, hey, I want you to do this. And you say, but God, people around me will think there's something wrong with me. People around me will say, she is weird. Or did you know that? Love others with the love of God. When he asks you to do something for that person, do it. When he asks you to say something to that person, do it. Whatever Jesus asks you to do, do it. Be like him. A life of obedience to God is the most fulfillment a human can experience. When I obey God, it shows my love for him and the fulfillment goes beyond anything you could ever imagine. I am a bit of a coffee-holic. I love coffee. And I love it so much that there are some times I cannot wait to go to bed at night so I can wake up in the morning and hit that magic button. And five minutes later, I have the most amazing cup of coffee. Anyone else here drink coffee? Like coffee? Okay. There is nothing better to drink than that first sip in the morning, right? Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's like, (sighs) I slept all night just so I could experience this. (laughs) And it is amazing. Before I go to bed at night, I always fill my coffee pot. I put the coffee in. I have it all ready so that even if I can't, I can't open my eyes in the morning, I can find that button and and pretty soon, the aroma of the coffee comes. More fulfilling than that is obedience to God. We as humans, and especially Americans, love to get things. Look at your Amazon account. How many things have you ordered in the past month? I'm not even going to go into how many things have you ordered during quarantine. I'm telling you, I became addicted to Amazon during quarantine. And it was like, oh, that looks good. I will just order that. But the thing with ordering things, the thing with buying things, the thing with attaining material things... It soon, the fulfillment soon leaves. It's a momentary joy that comes from getting stuff. There's, there's not a lasting fulfillment. Your relationships, there cannot be a fulfillment like obeying God. Because you're going to disappoint that person in your relationship and they are going to disappoint you at some point in time. But obeying God brings no disappointment. It didn't say it doesn't bring hardship, but it does not bring disappointment. It brings a fulfillment that goes beyond anything. No personal ambition achieved can fulfill you like obeying the Lord like being obedient to what he has to say to you. So how do I live an obedient life? You live as Jesus lived. You listen to the Lord. I love to tell my grandkids about this. God speaks to you in ways that only you can understand. One night I was talking to Zach and he said, Gammy, God doesn't speak to me. I said, oh, yes, he does, Zach. You just have to learn to listen for him. Um, 
I used to pray in the mornings, God, speak to me today. And the Holy Spirit stopped something in my heart. And he said, Sharon, I speak to you every day. The problem is you're not always listening. And so I have begun to pray in the mornings, Lord, Father, Jesus, open my ears, open my eyes to see, to hear what you are speaking to me today. Give me the understanding to know what you have for me to do. God will speak to you. God does speak to you. It's simply up to you to obey him, to follow in the way that he has for you. Many years ago, back in, I don't know if it was the 80s or 90s, um, they came out with bracelets, WWJD, what would Jesus do? And it was a good reminder for people to think before they did anything about, okay, am I doing what Jesus would do in this situation? Too often we say, what would I do now? What would someone that I value, someone that I think is wise, somebody that I admire, what would they do in this situation instead of what would Jesus do? I need to take a step back every day and say, what would Jesus do in this situation? Something I learned a long time ago, it's very simple And yet sometimes it's very difficult. Just do what is right. But I don't know what is right. Then take one step towards what you believe to be right. If it's wrong, you'll be guided towards what is right. Just do what is right. What would Jesus do in my relationships? What would Jesus do with my finances? What would Jesus do in my lifestyle? Obedience to him is the highest form of love that you can express to Jesus. Obedience to him is the highest form of love that you can express. So we understand that our love for Jesus is shown by our obedience to him. But how does that obedience affect the world around you? How does that obedience affect those that you may not even know? A while ago, quite a few years ago, my husband and I pastored in a church um, in Lake Trobe. We had some people in our church that were very... um, Sweet people, good people. I loved them. And there was one particular couple. They had actually attended my husband's church when he was growing up. Rose and Bob Johnson. And, well, Rose was a quirky kind of woman. Loved the Lord with her heart. Would do whatever God told her to do. Well, instead of me telling this story, I'm going to ask a friend of mine to come up and share the rest of the story about these three Bibles. Rosemary. Hello. So uh, we actually discovered this connection on Thursday on our car ride home from Summit. Sharon asked me how I found Calvary, and it got weird. (laughs) So um, in 2012, I was in a really bad car accident. Um, I broke my arm. It's now made out of metal. Pretty cool. But because of that, I had to quit my career as a hairstylist and find a new job. Um, I became, I don't even know what I was, like a clerk, I guess, at a pharmacy in Latrobe. And I was working one day, and a woman came in. She picked up her scripts, and she left. I went back. I was working on something. I saw her coming back in, and I was like, oh, no. Like, something's wrong. (laughs) Here we go. So um, she went to my coworker, and she was like, can I talk to that girl that just waited on me? And my coworker's like, sure. She's like, that lady's back. I'm like, here we go. So I walk up to the counter, and she's like, I don't know what this means, and I don't know why. She's like, but I've had this Bible for some time now, and it's this one right here. And she's like, and it's in my car, and I get to the car, and God tells me to come back and give it to you. And I was like, 
At this point in time in my life, I was not religious at all, at all. Uh, I knew God, I grew up Catholic, but fell out of church and just fell out of religion. Um, so when she was giving me that Bible, I'm like, no, no, thank you. I'm like, that's, that's super personal and it's going to go to waste. Like it's, I'm not, I'm not going to read it. Like, to be honest, I'm never going to open that Bible. And she's like, it's not my job to make sure you open it. It was just my job to give it to you. She's like, so here's my Bible. And she left and I looked at my coworker and my coworker was like, I'm like, okay. So I took it home, put it on the bookshelf, didn't think twice about it. About two weeks after that, normal day, we're working. Uh, Another lady comes in, a younger woman. She comes in, picks up her scripts. She leaves. I go back, do my job. See her coming back in. I'm like, oh no, something's wrong. (laughs) Gonna get yelled at. She comes in and she's like, I don't, this is gonna be weird. She's like, and I sat in my car for a few minutes and thought about how weird this was gonna be. She's like, but I had to do it. And I was like, okay. And she comes in and she's like, I have this box of Bibles in my trunk. (laughs) And she's like, I'm a youth uh, pastor. She's like, for a church locally, she's like, and I bought these Bibles for my youth group. She's like, and, you know, the Lord told me to bring it on in and give you one. And I was like, well, oddly enough, I just got a Bible. I don't need that one. (laughs) She's like, no, like, you know, it's my job to give it to you. What you do with it is your decision. And I was like, Okay, so I turn around and I look at my coworker and she's just like, <laughs> like, all right, thanks. Took it home, put it on the bookshelf, didn't think twice about it. So now I have two Bibles. A couple weeks later, we're working and an older gentleman comes in, gets a script, he leaves. A couple minutes later, he comes walking back in and I'm like, oh no, I'm gonna get you know yelled at, something's wrong because that's like your first thought when you see someone coming back that was just in your store. He comes in and my coworker is like, hi, can I help you? And he's like, can I talk to her? And I'm like, oh, no. So then she looks at me, I look at her, and I walk up to the counter, and I'm like, hi, how can I help you? And he's like, so, and I was like, if you're about to give me a Bible, <laughs> the look on this man's face, let me tell you. So he was like, how did you know? I said, because this is my third one in about two months. And he's like, well, he's like, this is a little one. So in a two-month span, I've gotten three different Bibles and three different translations. King James was the first one. Uh, The second one was NIV, and the third one was an ESV pocket Bible, so I could take it with me. And um, I was like, what is happening? So I looked at my coworker, and I'm like, what's going on? She's like, I don't know, but you need to find you a church. I was like, whew. I'm like, okay. So... I, um, I wound up leaving that job, and I went back to the salon as their front desk person to later become their manager, but I was talking to a coworker of mine. She is somewhere with her baby, but her husband and her mother are right there, but um, I was talking to a coworker of mine, and I'm like, yeah, like, I think I, uh, I think I need to find a church, and she's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I think a tractor trailer is about to open up on 119, and like, Bibles are just going to start smashing my car. So like, I think I need to find a church. And she's like, well, she's like, you know, my husband and I were talking about it too. Like we could all try church together. Meanwhile, another employee of ours overheard the conversation and she said, weirdly enough, I know what church you should try. And I was like, okay. And she's like, I just got hired on. They're putting a new foyer on and I'm going to be their interior decorator for it. She's like, but it's Calvary and Irwin. She's like straight behind Coles. Like, I don't know why, but I think you guys are you'll like it. And I was like, all right. So we came on Father's Day of 2018 and never looked back. Now I am going to become credentialed to become a youth pastor myself. And I know, right? But because of, it all started, it all started with Rose Johnson and her obedience to listen to the Lord when he told her to give me this Bible. And it's just crazy the connections. Here I am with you, and you and Pastor Paul were her pastor, and it's just crazy. It's, it's, it's unexplainable. Thank you, Rosemary. <laughs> when Rosemary shared that story with us on Thursday, that van was so quiet. It was like, oh my, oh my, oh my. God, you are showing me something so very important. Obedience to God isn't just about 
how my God is going to bless me. It's not just about what am I going to get from this. Obedience to God goes far beyond that. Obedience to God means that people that I don't even know are going to be affected by my decisions. God is good. God loves you with an unfailing love. Your response to that is, okay, God, what do you want me to do today? Give some random woman a Bible. Now, if Rose had never given this Bible, there were two more coming. I don't know. Maybe God intended for you to get five Bibles. Maybe. Who knows? But the point is, not one person had to obey. There were three. Not one person's obedience affected everything in Rosemary's life. Each one of them did. When we obey God, he blesses, he fulfills, he is God. What I would, what would have happened today, what would happen today, tomorrow, or this week, if you choose to obey God in every area of your life. I'm going to ask you to accept this challenge. I'm going to ask you today, tomorrow, this week, to see what God has for you as you listen and obey God.